All right, so today we're going to be going through the Kendrick Traction Splint. We're going to talk about when to use it, when not to use it, and how to apply it. So what does this do? This, uh, this applies traction to the leg, and it is designed for a mid-shaft femur fracture. That is all, right? It can be done with someone who's got bilateral femur fractures, so you can put on two. Um, and it can also be applied with someone who has a pelvic fracture. It's not contraindicated in people with pelvic fractures. When can't we use it? When there's any major injury below that injury. So because you're pulling traction, we can't have ankle or foot injuries or tib fib fractures, and we can't have a significant knee fracture. So if we've ruled all of that out, that's fine. We can apply the traction. How do we know if there is a mid shaft femur fracture? So what we're going to be seeing is that we're going to be seeing shortening of the leg. So the leg that is injured will be shortened and it will be rotated. And the swelling will be in the middle of the thigh, right? If they have a, a NOF, so a neck of femur, you're not going to see that mid shaft swelling. This also takes significant force, right? So we have that shortening and that rotating. So how does this work? So in the bag, there should be at least three things, right? So what are these three things? There's the poles, there is the groin strap and there's the ankle strap. So what goes on first? The groin strap. So as you can see, there's a little like two holes there um, and that goes for the pole. So we apply this onto the patient. Obviously gaining consent and all that. So this goes as high up into the groin as possible and it is tightened. It's a good idea to take anything out of the pockets if needed, and that these two poles need to be on the outside of the leg. We're then going to get the poles. So the poles pretty much are gonna remind you of a tent, and that's exactly what they are. It is tent poles, right? But what's the most important point and where the biggest failing that I have noticed that happens here is that it isn't measured correctly. The only thing I haven't quite done yet because we haven't started yet doing what we're doing is that we should we need two people to be able to do this and what happens is that you get a second person to pull traction. Before we start doing much, what we need to do is we need to start pulling manual traction. So the second person, there's obviously no, we don't have two people here, is that they're gonna come along like this and they're going to pull manual traction and they're not going to let go of manual traction, right? That is where we are going to be able to align the femur, which limits the bleeding, and they hold manual traction the whole time. So while they're holding manual traction, this is then applied. Coming back to the biggest point of failure of why it doesn't work out is that this black line, as you can see, it's different colors, right? The black line should be at the foot or past the foot, not, so if that's the foot, it needs to be past the foot, not, so it needs to be distal to the foot, right? So after the foot. So when you are measuring, if you were to measure like that, that would be probably maybe too small, right? Because the black point is not at the foot. So I would go to the second pole, because oftentimes what you'll see is that someone will traction like this. And there isn't enough space to pull traction. So the black point needs to be past the foot. So that's gonna be... Uh, um, yeah, we're gonna go with that one. So we're gonna push that into here. And then this yellow tag is the only tag that is attached to the poles. It is attached above the knee. What's the purpose of this strap? This strap is going to keep the pole next to the leg. We need that, right? So once that's been attached, we are then going to attach the ankle strap. Before we do this, we're also wanting to assess for pulse, warmth, motor, and sensation. Do we have a pedal pulse? Do we have motion? Do we have sensation? What is the color temperature difference? So that we know if we have any perfusion to the foot. A trick that I have learned is that what you can do is that you can actually put the SATS probe onto the finger, sorry, onto the toe that you think the foot is, has no blood flow. And if the SATS probe picks up a pulsatile blood flow, which will then give you a SATS reading, a reliable reading, um, that tells us that there's actually blood flow to that foot. But anyway, let's not get distracted. So how does this work? So this part, there's a part there that goes over the foot, like that. And this goes around the ankle. Someone would be holding inline traction, so the foot wouldn't be on the ground anyway. And there we go. So then on here, we have a little pulley system, right? The yellow bit gets attached to the end. 
So the yellow bit gets pushed through that little star shape at the end of the Kendrick, and you attach there. And then what actually needs to happen is that you can also tighten that up a little bit. Then what you do is you actually need to apply a bit of backwards force onto here. And if you actually read the manual, it says this too. You need to apply some backwards pressure force and apply that traction like this. And there we go. How far do we pull until it's an equal length to the other foot? Once that's done, we're going to check again. Do we have pulse? Do we have warmth? Do we have motor? Do we have sensation? Once that's done, that's great. Then we have now applied traction and inline traction can be released. Then you have two more. The red one goes above the injury on the thigh. Like that. Not over the injury. And the green one goes on the ankle. This keeps the pole in line next to the foot and applied. And that is the Kendrick traction. Any questions, please drop them in the comments. I'd love to know. If you enjoy this, probably want to check out my um, trauma videos. You'd probably find this quite interesting.